Hi, today we're here at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins, and we're talking to Ted Wagoner. Uh, Ted, what would you like to talk about today? Well, uh, Steve, I was thinking today would be a good day to talk about attorney fees. When people think about lawyers, they think about legal fees, and that's usually not a good thing for them to follow up thinking about, but I just wanted to put some things in perspective for them. Okay. So, um, lawyers um, are obviously highly educated people, and so there's uh, some cost to using a lawyer's services. But what most people don't think of when they think of legal fees is that they're like a major appliance or a major piece of furniture around the house. You know, we don't replace our refrigerator every year or every two years. We may use them every five or 10, or I think I think my refrigerator's going on 15 years now, mm -hmm. and it's still running and I'm not having any trouble with it. So I don't replace it. Uh, coming to my office for most legal events is something you do once every five years, 10 years. You know, maybe the cost of a new chair or a couch or a refrigerator. If it's a big enough problem, it may be the cost of a small car or for even some people, it could be even worse. But for the most part, legal fees can be equated with um, a, a large expense you have. But unless you're either in business with uh, uh, a lot of things going on or you're um, uh, particularly in a troublesome person, frequently uh, spending time with the police and the jail folks, uh, you're not going to have lawyer fees every year or every two years. So uh, we'll just try and put that into a little bit of perspective. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, the things that you speak about, you know, you have different items that obviously come up, you know, when you have older parents or right. a lot of us uh, have that situation where we have older parents who we're dealing with uh, things such as that. Mm -hmm. um, is there any kind of um, estimate that you can give? I know every case is, is different, but, um, you know, if you're out there watching, you know, you're talking about legal fees, is there... Mm -hmm kind of an average that you can say or as you said every case is different mm -hmm. every issue is different um, and that's why lawyers really hate to uh, give a ballpark estimate um, for for several reasons number mm -hmm. one uh, the facts being different make the outcome different right you know if your parents uh, to use that as an example if your parents are going to move into an assisted living facility that's entirely different situation than if they're going to first move into uh, directly into a nursing home, or if they're going to try and get on one of the waiver programs, or if uh, there's a lien issue because of previous medical expenses and on and on and on. There are a number of variables and each variable will have an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, in our firm, uh, we generally charge consultation fees uh, for a variety of reasons, and we know a lot of people see the you know no consultation fee uh, ads on TV. Mm -hmm. Most of those people that advertise no consultation fee are talking to you about a case that's going to bring a fee in the future. If you come in and ask me some questions about dealing with uh, your parents or uh, planning uh, a sale of your property or what are the tax implications of a particular decision you may make, um, that may be the only time I see you. Mm -hmm. And so you come in and get uh, in information, advice that may be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars to you and I don't see you back and there's no further work to do, mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, th that's a very nice service for you, but it doesn't keep uh, my staff employed right. or my office open. So. Uh, so we look at it uh, differently, and the consultation fee gives us the opportunity to spend the time with you to dive fairly deep into the facts so that we understand what's going on. Um, you may be looking at selling your property, and you know, several times a year I'll get a question, can I sell my property without a realtor? Well, yes, if you're smart enough to and you understand all the issues, uh, you can do it with um, with a lawyer uh, providing you some assistance, or you can do it with a realtor. Uh, sale of farms and, and things like that, going into business, mm -hmm. is is an area that you know if you're going to uh, you know sell knickknacks out of your house, that's one aspect of it. 
if on the other hand you're going to open up a shop downtown, invite people in and have insurance issues and a number of other issues, that's far more complex. Mm -hmm. And so for me to sit here and say, you know, t talking to you is either $100 or $1,000 or sure. $10,000 doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, I have had a couple of occasions where people have come in and I've given them a ballpark. I say, well, it will come between A and B. Mm -hmm. And then you do all the work that you tell them will take it to B because their situation requires it. And they remember the price was going to be A. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have a little bit of problem with that from time mm -hmm. to time. But uh, for the most part, uh, legal fees are uh, an issue that is, of course, vitally important to a client. Uh, there are very, very few cases where at the end of the consultation, I can't give you a pretty good idea of what's going to be going on. Now, the uh, no consultation, no fee without recovery, those are called contingency fee cases. Sure. And uh, until you have a written contract with those lawyers, you don't have a lawyer and they don't have a client. Mm -hmm. That's one of the rules that a lawyer cannot take on a contingency fee case without having a a contract that outlines for you uh, what the client gets out of the recovery, what the lawyer gets out of the recovery, who pays the expenses, how do things go from uh, from point A to point B, so that everybody has a real good understanding of what's going on. We'll occasionally get a phone call and say, I didn't think my lawyer was going to charge me that much because there wasn't a clear explanation, or if there was a clear explanation, the client has forgotten that uh, you know a one third recovery is means a one third of the fee, of the recovery, mm -hmm. um, and then you have to look and see who pays the expenses and all that. And you can see uh, a lot of lawyers uh, talk about fees um, in a very shorthand way in their advertising, mm -hmm. but uh, and uh, and that, and that's good to do because. I think people need to know that you know I've got staff. I've got you can see the books here. Uh, we don't use very many of them anymore because we have to pay the electronic research fees now. But uh, uh, there's a lot of expenses in running a law office, and unfortunately for the clients, they're the ones who have to provide the the fees to do that. So. Sure, a lot goes into it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, different parts mm -hmm. and pieces of it. But if you ever have any questions, obviously give uh, the folks here at Peterson. Wagoner and Perkins a call, and you guys can uh, definitely explain it to them on a case-by-case -case basis. Exactly. And, you know, Andy can do this. Uh, Lauren's now learning uh, an awful lot in the months she's been here. We're very pleased with the progress she's making. I have uh, lectured, I think it's at least half a dozen times, on the ethics of legal fees to lawyers and to uh, judges as well. Uh, and so, you know, we understand the concept pretty mm -hmm. well around here. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Glad, uh, glad you come in and kind of clear some of those things up for the folks. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, just give the folks here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins a call. And uh, Ted, thanks for your time, and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, Happy New Year. Well, thank you very much, and season's greetings to you and to your family, as well as to our viewers.